When you look at the historical experience of African Americans in the United States, uh, you have to start with the experience of slavery and the vestiges of slavery in terms of the, tra the trauma associated with it. And I think that um, you know, blacks continue to experience uh, trauma in, in, in certain ways, and certainly with respect to uh, those who live in urban communities that are uh, sort of uh, infested with drugs or that are particularly violent. Those are traumatic situations that they experience on a daily basis. Certainly, uh, as we've seen in, um, in recent events, interactions with the police can be, again, particularly traumatic. So when you talk about mental illness in the black community, I think you have to begin with the experience of trauma and how trauma continues to abound and um, and their experiences and in their, their daily lives. I think that what happens for a lot of individuals is that they suffer in silence um, with respect to having a mental illness. And so what I mean by that, in the greater society, um, there's certainly a lot of stigma associated with mental illness. Um, it's sort of uh, antithetical to the American ethic, which is to you know, be strong and courageous, to pull yourself up by the bootstrap, to weather the storm, et cetera. I think the second part of that you know, point is what's happening at the community level or the society level. And I think what happens is that within the black community, um, I think that, again, you know, that ethic uh, about what it means to be strong and courageous um, is particularly pronounced because um, of trying to you know, combat those forces like discrimination or racism. Um, and you know, it just adds to the burden of you know, sort of what it means to survive. And so then the person who's struggling with the mental illness is perhaps not embraced or you know, warmly accepted because of their struggles. You know, I remember uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a young person growing up, I used to hear about the person who was quote unquote sent down south. I used to wonder what that meant. And it wasn't until I got older that I became, um, you know, more knowledgeable of the fact that a per that person was struggling with a mental illness or perhaps substance abuse. From a historical perspective, there's been a lot of emphasis in the black community, particularly in black families, uh, on keeping your problems close to the vest in the home. You don't share what's going on with outsiders. No one can uh, treat you as best as your family can. You bring all your burdens and your problems to your family. And if you do take it any, to any entity outside of your family, it's the black church. The church is really important in the black community. Make no mistake about it. It's uh, a source of, uh, you know, sort of salvation and, uh, and healing. And there's the whole collective support uh, from, you know, you get from your fellow churchgoers and that sort of thing. But I think also what has historically happened is that um, the church has been defined as the place to, you know, sort of relieve your symptoms or to address your burdens and so it stops there. And what I think needs to happen is that first of all I think pastors and lay ministers can be more trained uh, in the signs and presentations of uh, mental illness but I think that the church could be sort of a triage unit if you will such that it identifies those who have needs and it's that sort of first step and the you know, sort of entree into care, but it shouldn't stop there. I believe that culturally competent care is critical to everything. If patients perceive that providers are inauthentic and do not care about their unique circumstances, then they're likely to be turned off. At a baseline, providers should understand their the history of their neighborhoods, for example, or the history of the experience of, uh, of African Americans and Latinos, uh, such that they can put 
the clinical presentation into context and understand what unique factors um, are in play with respect to the clinical presentation and how that person is seeking to you know, survive and live in the world as an African American or a Latino. And so I think that it's the onus is on the provider to understand that context and to understand what it means uh, for that person to live in that context.